Hey guys, so I have an example video here that was actually a request. So I totally read over your requests and I make videos when you submit them. So the request was to have a square root in the denominator and have to use the definition of the derivative. So for this example, this is gonna be kind of a longer example because it is a little bit technical. We wanna find the tangent line at the point using only the definition of the derivative. And here's the definition of the derivative. So here's the function I'm gonna use for this example and here's the point. So first things first, we've got to find the derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and just write out the definition of the derivative. So this is f of x plus h. The limit is that h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all of that over h. And it's always a good idea to write this out first because it makes it very clear you kind of know where you want to start. So if anything kind of happens after that, like it was at least clear that you kind of knew what the, the idea was. So next thing, I want to go ahead and plug in everything. So this is going to be 5 over the square root of 7 minus x minus h minus 5 over the square root of 7 minus x and then all of that over h. Okay, so looking at what we've got now, um, we've got a limit with a fraction, two sets of fractions kind of within a greater fraction. So the general thing that you want to do then is is clear the denominators. So I know you might be thinking, oh, can't I just, you know, make common denominators on top? I mean, you, you can, but I tend to notice that just kind of makes the problem a little bit more complicated. Some people are fine with that level of detail, but I tend to notice that even though people kind of know the general idea of where they want to go with that, it's like it's more likely to make a mistake because it's just more stuff to write down. So if I take a look at this and I think about what is the, the common denominator here, so it's really this denominator and this denominator. So if I want to clear out the denominators, what I want to do, and I'm kind of running out of room here, but I want to take this entire thing and I want to multiply it by the square root of 7 minus x and the square root of 7 minus x minus h. Now. I want to multiply this on the top, but whatever I do to the top, I have to do the same thing to the bottom. So I've got a little bit more space over here. So this is going to be the square root of 7 minus x and then the square root of 7 minus x minus h. Okay, so now if I think about what happens as I distribute these, these two fractions, the, just the denominator is going to clear, right? So as I multiply this by these two denominators, the 7 minus x minus h is going to cancel out. So I'm just left with this square root of 7 minus x, right? And then for this other one, when I do this multiplication here, it's the same idea, right? So I'm multiplying this fraction by this whole thing here. So the square root of 7 minus x is going to cancel out. So then what am I left with? I'm left with the square root of 7 minus x minus h. So I'm going to rewrite this, this problem now. I'll make more space in a second. But the other thing I just want to point out here, so both of these fractions both have the 5. I want to go ahead and pull the 5 out in front because it's just kind of noise and I don't want to have it there. So let me make some space. And now let me write out what we're left with. Okay, so that's everything that I'm left with. And now I have to think about this particular limit. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is just, can, can I go ahead and evaluate it? I've already done a lot of work. Well, if I plug h equals 0 in, I actually end up with 0 equals 0, or I mean 0 over 0. If you don't believe that, pause the video here and just take a second to convince yourself of that. So basically, we now have to kind of figure out what else can we do to this problem. And since we've got square roots, a really common technique would be to use the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply the top by the square root of 7 minus x plus the square root of 7 minus x minus h. And whatever I do to the top, I have to do the same thing to the bottom. So this is a technique we already practiced with limits. Okay, so let me make some space. And now I'm going to go through and do the multiplication. Now I'm only going to do the multiplication on top. It's usually a good idea to not multiply. So, so where you're trying to specifically apply the conjugate, 
like you want to just start with the multiplication there. A lot of times um, the side that you didn't want to have the conjugate applied to, something's going to work out there. So you might want to pause the video here and also kind of work this out on your own and then hit play when you're ready. So this is going to come out to Okay, so everything that you see here, so this is what this is going to come out to. And so now as I look at the denominator, or sorry, the numerator, notice what cancels. So the 7 and then a minus 7, those are going to cancel out. And then I've got negative x and then this negative, negative x. So that becomes positive x. So those have opposite signs. So I'm just left with this H right here. So let me clear space. And now let's write out what we're left with. Okay, and so now you can see that the H's are actually gonna cancel out. So now let's write everything out one more time. Okay, and so now that I've kind of rearranged everything and I've simplified, what happens if I plug in h equals zero? Now I no longer have that problem where I have a the zero over zero and I don't have a zero in the denominator. So I'm, I'm kind of good to go here. So I'll clear some space. And so now I can evaluate the limit. So I'm gonna plug in h equals zero. So I'm gonna drop the limit notation because now I can safely evaluate the limit. So this is gonna be five times, and then this is going to be a big old fraction. So this will be the square root of 7 minus x. So when I plug in h equals 0 into this square root, I get the square root of 7 minus x because the h drops out. And then here I get the square root of 7 minus x plus the square root of 7 minus x again. So lots of uh, square roots of 7 minus x. Now one thing that I want to do just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to rewrite all of these radicals now with rational exponents and then I'm going to collect my like terms here. So this will become y prime equals, so now I'm going to put the 5 on top and this will be the square root, the square root of 7 minus x will now become 7 minus x to the 1 half as well this, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second, and then this is 2 times 7 minus x to the 1 half, so those are like terms so I can add those up. And so now I have these different 7 minus x's, so I have 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, so I can add them all up. So I'll make some space, and now I can simplify, so this becomes y prime equals 5 over 2 times 7 minus x to the 3 halves. Okay, now there's my derivative. <laughs> now we're not done. Remember, the whole question here was to actually find the tangent line. So now I'll make a little room so we can actually answer the, the question we were asked. Now, one thing I just want to remind you of, this point, where did this point come from? Did it come from this or did it come from this? This is a really common thing that, that people forget when they first learn derivatives. The point always comes from the original function. So you want to remind that over and over and over again. So what's the point of the derivative? If I just plug in the point, will I have that tangent line? No. The derivative stands for how to find the slope at a point. So now what I need to do is I need to plug in the x part of this point into the derivative. So this will become y prime equals 5 over 2 times 7 minus 6 to the 3 halves. And if I work all of this out, I get y prime is ultimately going to equal 5 over 2 times 1. So this is just 5 over 2. So what is this? You might have to remind yourself of this over and over. This is our slope, m. So the big thing you need for any line, you need a point, which was given to us, and you need a slope. Those are the two things you need to make a line. So let me clear some space. 
And so now I can bust out my point slope form of a line like so. And I can plug in my point like this. Oops, my M was 5 over 2. And then there's my X sub 1. And so now from here you can kind of go wherever you need with it. So let's say that I need to have this in slope intercept form. So this becomes 5 halves X minus 15. And so then ultimately I get Y equals 5 halves X minus 10. So that would be your tangent line at the given point 6, 5. And so that'll cover it for this particular video. So kind of a, a slightly more tricky derivative to figure out if you have to use the definition of the derivative. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll see you next time.